Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. And I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a blessed Sunday. And in the news this morning for December 3, 2023, mother distraught as a 14-year-old daughter missing since Wednesday. The mother of 14-year-old from student Christina Brackett, who has been missing since Wednesday, is appealing to the public for help in locating her. Sally Ann Blair, who resides in Petersville, West Maland, told the news that she sent her daughter off to school on Wednesday morning, but the teen is yet to return home. We sent her to school and then when time school over, me not see she come home from school. So I usually check my neighbor where she always stay. Like if I go on the road and come back and she says she not see her. We did just a wait because we know taxi is difficult. Then going up to 9 p.m. and 10 p.m., I still don't see. No call, no information, none at all. Blair said it is unlike her daughter not to return home. She normally comes home. It's the first she never come home till now. She not really talkative. She very quiet. She may have one friend, but not plenty because she doesn't talk much, 39-year-old Blair added. She said, according to the vice principal of Room Technical High, where Brackett is a grade 9 student, the teen turned up for classes on Wednesday, but she has been absent since. When I called the vice principal, he said she went to school on that day but she didn't go to school Thursday or the rest of the week. He checked her form teacher and she marked register and said that she came until school over, the mother said. Blair filed a missing person report at the White House police station on Thursday. Her daughter usually gets home by 6 p.m., Blair said. She noted that on the day Christina disappeared, school dismissed at 1.45 p.m. instead of the usual 2.55 p.m. Ever since her daughter's disappearance, the mother of four has been struggling to cope. I have sleepless nights, can't eat, can't sleep, can't think straight. I've been crying a lot. It's been frustrating. It's resting on my mind and me just can't believe and me don't know what happened. It is very hard for me now. It's a sad news to hear that your daughter go out and she did not come in on time. The distraught mother told the news. She said the community has also been impacted by her daughter's disappearance. It's been stressing to all of us in the community because they just know her as a humble child who doesn't give trouble. It really hurts everyone, she said. She is pleading to the public for help. I am appealing to everyone worldwide. Please help me to find my daughter. I hope she is safe wherever she is and she comes home without a harm. The mother pleaded while fighting to hold her back at the tears. Anyone who knows the whereabouts of Christina Brackett is asked to call the White House police station at 876-963-5220, the nearest police station or 119. Probe launched after cops and nephew found her dead at a St. Catherine home. An investigation has been launched after the 12-year-old nephew of a police woman was found shot to death in Snake Hill District in Point Hill, St. Catherine on Saturday. The child, identified as a Marco Brown, a student of Jonathan Grant High School, was with his mother at their home where the cop was visiting. Reports reaching the news indicated that the cop, a constable, went to the home and the mother was combing her hair outside. A loud explosion was heard inside and upon investigating, the child was seen lying on the floor beside a bed with a gunshot wound to the head. The cop's service firearm was found inside her handbag on the bed beside him. The firearm's muzzle was turned upwards. The authorities were called and the scene processed. Two killed as a bloodletting and robberies continue in Westmoreland. Two men were shot dead in separate incidents in Westmoreland on Saturday morning as the criminals continue to wreak havoc in the parish. One of the deceased men has been identified as 54-year-old Omar James, a fruit vendor of St. James. The second victim has only been identified by his alias Arasta. Reports from the Savannah Lamar police are that about 6.10 a.m., James was unloading fruits from his motor vehicle when a motorcycle drove up with two men aboard. One of the men then approached James and opened gunfire, hitting him in the head. The men then drove off on the same motorcycle. The police were alerted, and on their arrival, James was seen lying along the roadway in a pool of blood with a single gunshot wounded to his head. He was taken to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Speaking with the news on Saturday afternoon, Zone 4 Commander for Little London and Negril, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Sean J. Mitchell said that the second incident took place on Nunparil Road in Negril. 
We had a murder shortly after 10 o'clock this morning on Nonparil Road. It is reported that a gentleman was coming out of his premises in his vehicle when he was pounced upon by a man who shot him several times in his vehicle. He subsequently died on location, DSP Mitchell revealed. Mitchell also said that two persons were robbed outside a mini-mart at West End in Negril on Saturday morning. He said the thieves grabbed the items from their vehicles. He said the police have been responding to a number of incidents in the space and he is appealing to citizens to cooperate with the lawmen. We are urging citizens to report any unusual activities and the stranger vehicles parked at the premises reported them to the police so we can investigate the same, he appealed. He added that a number of assets have been deployed in the Negril zone. We have the Quick Response Unit, the Military Police Support. We have a number of police patrols along Norman Manley Boulevard, Red Ground, and along Nonparil Road, he assured. On Friday, Member of Parliament for Westmoreland Western, Moreland Wilson, called for a state of public emergency amid the spate of robberies and murders in the parish. Non-payment of new salaries leaves medtechs fuming as a Christmas approaches. Three months after voicing displeasure at the manner in which the Union of Technical Administrative and the Supervisory Personnel handled their compensation review package, government paid medical technologists are still awaiting payment. And according to Donaldo Montague, a senior medical technologist at the Conroe Regional Hospital, the professionals are severely disappointed, demoralized and demotivated as they head into the Christmas season, struggling to stay afloat. Montague explained that the medical technologists were relieved after the union signed the wage agreement earlier in September. However, that feeling was short-lived as they still were not in receipt of the anticipated payments during that pay cycle. He told the news that a correspondence from the Ministry of Health and Wellness indicated that provisions would have been made to hand these monies over to the medical technologists, but their union told them otherwise. We made an initiation to sign on September 5. We could have got payments in September based on the fact that several groups got payment within the month because the ministry made provisions to do a multiple payment. They paid the salary and gave the other payments during the month. However, UTAPs were the ones doing the signing and they said that the payment agreement was made for October, said Montague. October 25th came and still no payment was made to the medical technologist, so we said, in the worst-case scenario, we will get it in November, but up to now we are still waiting on payment. We gave them two months and still no payment, the senior medical technologist complained. As the countdown to Christmas begins, Montague told the news that the professionals were growing weary and anxious as they wish to enjoy the festive season with their families. However, with a current salary of approximately $95,000 per month before taxes for a junior medical technologist and $120,000 monthly for senior professionals, Montague said that the festive season isn't proving to be a joyous time. The med techs are disgruntled based on the fact that another Yuletide season is coming around and the prices for everything have gone up and all the other people within the hospital have got their salary increases. Medtechs are still grappling with the effects of the prices of goods and the services going up, so we are still suffering based on the economic times, Montague said. Documents obtained by the news indicated that with a compensation review, the minimum salary for a junior medical technologist would increase from $1,146,743 to $2,998,000. $418 per annum as of April 1, 2023. At the same time, senior medical technologists would be looking at a minimum of $3,477,245, a major jump from their usual $1,290,712 a year. That was welcomed by the professionals. In the meantime, Montague told the news that the medical technologist received a word from UTAP's chief delegate, Franklin White, that their payments were being delayed due to the health ministry, awaiting the costing from the Southeastern Regional Health Authority. Noting that the documents containing their costing were already sent to the health ministry by Western Regional Health Authority, Montague described the wait as unbearable. 
Some people have taken out loans to help through the hardship, so the retroactive payment that should be received will have to go back to paying for monies that were borrowed, Montague said. Going into the Yuletide season, people want to get gifts for their families and have a proper Christmas dinner, but there is no certainty that the payments will be made. There is no certainty or guarantee that the payments will be made even after we had a strike in September, he added. When contacted by the news, UTAP's General Secretary, St. Patrice Ennis, reiterated that all health regions except SERHA and the University Hospital of the West Indies had produced their costing to the health ministry as requested, and they need that the costing for the individual medtechs from the respective regions so that they could forward that to the relevant unit at the Ministry of Finance for the payment of monies to be handed over to the Ministry of Health, said Ennis. All the other regions, including those medtechs employed by the Ministry of Health directly, have gone in and it is the intention to make payment on the 15th of December, Ennis added. As it relates to the medical technologists employed in the other regions, Ennis told the news that there was no guarantee that they would be paid at that time. The ministry, as I understood it, wanted to make payment to everybody at the same time, but that is not what was done historically, so we ask that the payment be made to those whose costing have already been submitted, said Ennis. Efforts to obtain a comment from Chief Delegate White were unsuccessful. However, a news source shared that he stepped down from his position on Friday through a WhatsApp message. It's not lost on me the level of dissatisfaction and the disappointment with my handling of recent wage negotiations. Neither have I forgotten the commitment I have made concomitant to the signing of the contracts. Therefore, effective December 1, 2023, I will relinquish the position of chief delegate, leaving the way clear for a candidate of your choosing. Thank you for the confidence you placed in me in the past and the Godspeed, White reportedly said. Ennis confirmed that the union is now without a chief delegate.